from Los Angeles to a worldwide audience, this is Boaz Power TV, where we take your life to the next level. Now, internationally known speaker and author, here's Boaz. Hi, welcome to The Power Show. You are part of The Power Nation, and I'm so delighted that you're here. This here we help you improve your attitude, your relationships, your finances, and your career. So when people ask you, how's business, how's life, use one word, unbelievable with enthusiasm. Nobody will know what you're up to, but they'll think you're doing great and spread positive rumors about you, your life, your family, and your career. And also make a sign like the one above my shoulder on the other side. Every day I play like a champion. Bright yellow paper, touch it every day. High five it, it'll make a big difference in your attitude. Every day I play like a champion. This is episode number 93 on Boaz Power TV and it's called Let's Summit Up. Now, next time you take off in an airplane, in a commercial airliner, note that it'll usually climb to a flying altitude of about 36,000 feet. I fly a lot, so I know that. Now, if you had an altimeter at your seat and you were watching the plane ascending, I'd ask you to make a note of the moment the aircraft passes 29,028 feet on its way up to 36,000. That is the height of Mount Everest the highest point on Earth and part of the Himalayan mountain range. The north side of Everest faces Tibet and the south side overlooks Nepal. It was in 1921 that the first attempt was made to climb Mount Everest. In 1924, Englishmen named George Mallory and Andrew Irvine were last seen at almost 28,000 feet moving toward the summit. Mallory's body was found in 1999. The most famous climber of Mount Everest was New Zealander Edmund Hillary. Now he reached the top of Everest on May 29, 1953. His team used the southeast approach from Nepal. I recently had the pleasure of meeting an amazing husband and wife team who reached the summit of Mount Everest not once but twice, from the south and from the north. In fact, she was the first woman to climb the mountain from both sides. He is Ian Woodall and she is Kathy O'Dowd. They are both originally from South Africa. Kathy describes their incredible adventures in a fascinating book entitled Just for the Love of It. You might want to pick it up. It's a great book, Just for the Love of It. It is published by Free to Decide Publishing. Now, before you decide to take a hike up Mount Everest, please realize as Kathy notes in her book, that one in three climbers who goes above 8,000 meters, which is a little more than 26,000 feet, becomes a casualty in some way. Quote, she relates that three out of every four who attempt the climb fail and one in a hundred will die in the attempt. Wow. Then there's the large amount of money that must be raised from backers and sponsors, equipment to be bought, a team to be assembled, and permits to be obtained from Nepal. Kathy relates that the most dangerous thing about the climb is not the mountain, but the people on the team. Her adventure began in November of 1995. Kathy was living in uh, South Africa. She scanned a newspaper headline, Sunday Times Everest Expedition. We take the South African flag to the top of the world. This was the first ever attempt by South Africans. Kathy had been rock climbing for a number of years and was passionate about the sport. Much of the team for the Times Expedition had already been selected. However, they were looking for a South African woman climber. Kathy applied, met the expedition leader, Ian, her future husband, and was eventually selected. It was in May of 1996 the team arrived at the foot of Mount Everest. As Kathy's team began to make its way up Everest, there was news that a member of a team from Taiwan had fallen from the mountain had, and had died. She states, I was horrified by the suddenness with which someone had simply ceased to be. Complacency was one of the biggest risks we faced, she said. Sherpas are the local guides who are hired to help teams get to the top. Kathy comments, quote, I watched with envy as the Sherpas moved so swiftly. They were a curious people with their stoic acceptance of life's hardships and their easy delight in its pleasures. Well, isn't there a lesson in life there to accept life's hardships 
and an easy delight in its pleasures. Oh, i got to make a note of that. What a powerful lesson for all of us from the Sherpas of the Himalayas. They accept life's hardships and delight in its pleasures. It was on that first attempt that the team faced a killer storm while huddled in their tents. Cassie, Kathy writes in her book, It was as if we were plunged into a Dantean hell as the mountain was racked by howling winds, cloaked in swirling snow, frozen to its very core. Caught on the line between calm and panic, between safety and death, we could do nothing but wait. Now, throughout that first climb, there were contrasts between tragic events, team members who became ill, and an encouraging call from President Nelson Mandela of South Africa. The team kept going and finally made it to the summit, planting the flags of Nepal and South Africa. The lure of Mount Everest brought Kathy and Ian back in 1998 as they attempted to climb it from the opposite direction, Tibet, in the north. She writes, The north face stood nearly four kilometers, that's two and a half miles high, a vast bulwark of black rock covered and parked by snow. That second attempt would end in failure. The team, only a few hundred meters from the top of Mount Everest, tried to help a dying American climber. The woman's first words were, don't leave me. However, the woman was in such bad shape that it was impossible to bring her down from the mountain. Kathy had to eventually leave her to save her own life. Wow. In May of 1999, Kathy and Ian were back at Everest for another attempt from the north. Kathy states, more worrying than weather was illness. The harsh environment was taking its toll on our bodies. Ian's chest infection lingered, resulting in body-racking fits of coughing. At these altitudes, the body does not recover. Kathy and Ian did make it to the summit that year, and Kathy became the first woman to climb Mount Everest from both the south and the north. She writes in her book, quote, I had sent in the application to climb Everest because I love the mountains and because I didn't want to spend the rest of my life merely wondering what would have happened if I had applied, end quote. Is there figuratively a mountain that you wish to climb in your life? A project you wish to start? A career change you wish to make? Maybe it's time to send in the application. So here's the affirmation for this message on Boaz Power TV. And it talks about an affirmation of application. You may want to write it down. I will apply today to make the change I desire in my life. I will apply today to make the change I desire in my life. Let's take action. If you like these messages and a lot of people around the world find them highly beneficial, please forward this to five people you know and suggest they go to my website, boazpower.com. They can also subscribe free to these weekly messages on Boaz Power TV. Thank you for joining me. You are special. You are unique. You are destined for greatness. And I believe you can climb any mountain you decide to. I see it in you. You are a champion. Have a powerful day. This has been Boaz Power TV. To comment, see other episodes, or to subscribe to this free broadcast, go to our blog at boazpower.com. That's boazpower.com. We're here to take your life to the next level.